All right, thank you, everybody, and good morning. So this morning I'm going to talk to you about glass and its application in triple glazing. Before we get started, as a glass manufacturer, we always talk about sense pay new values. We can't take account for the other performance that goes on outside of the glass because there's too many variations. When you talk about sense pay new value, we talk about the performance that's in, that incorporates the glass, the cavity, any gas, and any coating. So to follow on with the theme of the day, we'll start with a pole. We'll go with something relatively easy. If you could all pick up your keypads now, um, who in the audience believes that triple glazing is more thermally insulating than double glazing? If you can press one for yes and two for no. That's quite impressive. Only 65% believe that it is. <laughs> well, this should be interesting. Okay, we'll try another one. This time we'll try something a little bit more difficult. We've got two 28mm insulated glass units. Both of them contain one leaf of low emissivity glass. They both contain argon cavities. One's double glazed and the other one's triple glazed. Which one do you believe is the more thermally insulating? That's one for the triple glazed and two for the double glazed. That's good. Only 41% of you believe that the uh, triple glazed unit is actually better and more thermally efficient. In fact, in that particular unit configuration, a triple glazed unit achieves a 1.3 centre pay new value compared to a double glazed unit, which actually achieves a 1.2. When it comes to thermal insulation in any insulating glass unit, Heat transfers through the unit in three ways, conduction, radiation, and convection. Simply putting glass in your window will reduce the rate of conduction. Putting a low emissivity glass into your window will reflect the long wave heat radiation and slow down the rate of radiation as the heat releases the unit. Adding a gas to your cavity will slow down convection currents that carry the heat from the inner pane to the outer pane and eventually out of the glass. Achieving the right performance in any unit requires all three aspects of this to be addressed. When it comes to convection currents, the size of your unit is almost as important as the gas used itself. If you've got an air-filled cavity, you're looking at an optimum performance of 16 mil. If you've got an argon cavity, you're looking at 14 to 16 mil. And if you've got a krypton cavity, you're looking at between 8 and 12 mil. So we'll go to another pole. Bearing in mind what we've said about the gas and the cavity size, we've got three unit configurations there. They're all triple glazed units. They all contain one leaf of low emissivity glass. They all contain argon cavities. And they all contain two leaves of clear glass. Number one is a 44 mil unit. Number two is a 40 mil unit. And number three is a 36 mil unit. Based on the information you've heard so far today, can you tell me which one you believe is the most thermally efficient? Excellent. I see we've got an educated audience with us today. Yeah, you are in fact correct. The 44 mil unit is uh, the most thermally efficient. To look at the actual performance figures, the 36 mil unit achieves a 1.1 cent pay new value. The 40 mil unit achieves a 1.0 cent pay new value. And the 44 mil unit in that particular scenario actually achieves a 0.9 cent pay new value. The message that I'm really trying to get across here is that triple glazing and having three panes of glass doesn't always mean that it's more thermally efficient. You've got to get the right combination of glass, coating, gas, and cavity size. So going back to one of the questions that I asked earlier, 
we saw that the 28 mil double glazed unit, which is the common unit that's being sold today and achieves most A-rated window energy ratings, achieves a 1.2 centre pane new value. The triple glazed 28 mil unit is nowhere near its optimum performance and actually achieves a worse performance than the double glazed unit at 1.3. However, if you get the right configuration, the 44 mil unit will actually achieve a centre pane new value of 0.6. Now that's a 50% improvement in thermal performance over the double glazed units that are being sold today. The other important consideration when it comes to triple glazing is that you're not just saving energy. It's not just more thermally efficient. You're actually creating a level of comfort. And in some ways it's a level of comfort that people aren't even aware that can, that can be achieved. If you correctly specify your triple glazing, you can actually ensure that the inner, the, the inner surface of the triple glazing it actually maintains a four degree temperature difference between the thermal, the ambient temperature inside the room. Now, the Passive House Standard is the first institute to actually recognize this formally in their approach. Now, if, you, if the temperature of the inner pane drops below four degrees of the ambient temperature, you start to get cold spots that pull in front of the glass. These cold spots will then drop to the floor and create downdrafts, even though your window is effectively completely airtight. Now, achieving this isn't just improving the thermal efficiency, it's creating a level of comfort inside people's homes. So now we move on to thermal stress. This is one of the most common questions that we tend to get when it comes to triple glazing. So let's have another poll. Who in the audience believes that the centre pane of a triple glazed unit should be toughened? If you can click one for yes, two for no, and three if you haven't got a clue. Okay, that's very interesting. So the majority of the audience do believe that the centre pane should be toughened. What I'm going to do now is actually explore the reasons behind that. Now, a nil glass can withstand no more of a temperature differential than 40 degrees. Now, inside a triple glazed unit, the centre pane, when directly affected by the sun, can quickly reach 60 to 70 degrees in literally tens of minutes. Unlike double glazed units, where there's a convection current inside and outside of the unit that carries the heat away from the glass. The centre pane is thermally insulated. It's got normally gas cavities and it's thermally broken with a warm edge spacer bar. As the heat passes through the unit, that centre pane builds up in temperature very, very quickly. As the centre pane starts to heat up, the middle of that centre pane will begin to expand. The outer perimeter of the glass is actually hidden away in the recess of the glazing, so the sun's heat doesn't actually penetrate the outer perimeter. As the middle of that pane starts to expand, the outer perimeter can actually contract slightly, and as the difference in temperature exceeds 40 degrees, the centre pane is put under thermal stress. So going back to the initial question, should the centre pane be toughened? Yes, the majority of the audience are correct. There is an exception to the rule. And if you follow the commercial route and you can actually trace where exactly that glazing is going and you know that it's not going to be exposed to direct solar heat gain, then it would be safe to go with an annealed centre pane. But for the majority of cases, people don't know exactly where those units are going to end up. And so we would always recommend that you toughen the centre pane. As a glass manufacturer, a lot of the questions that we do tend to get come around glass coatings and what surfaces those coatings should go on. When we talk about glass surface coatings, we always talk from the outside of the window in. So your outermost surface of your window we would consider to be surface one, the surface behind it to be surface two, in the case of a triple glazed unit, the innermost surface is surface six. Now, all low emissivity coatings are designed to go on surfaces 3 and surfaces 5. This ensures that you get the correct aesthetic appearance for the glass, 
It also ensures that you achieve the right G value, which is crucial when it comes to window energy ratings. The issue with putting your lower emissivity coatings on surfaces three and five is that your centre pane, as a coated glass, has higher level of absorption, and it does slightly increase the risk of thermal break. There's a lot of speculation that goes on in the industry that states that if you put your, surfaces on, your coatings on surfaces two and surfaces five, that you can actually avoid the centre pane having to be toughened. I'd like to clarify to everyone today that that isn't the case. We've done enough thermal stress analysis to find that there will always be an instance where that centre pane could still break. So we would still recommend that even in that scenario, the centre pane should be toughened. There's other key points that need to, you need to be aware of. By turning your low E and moving it from surface 3 to surface 2, you're changing the aesthetic appearance of that glass. It becomes slightly more reflective, and it also reduces the G value. So if you're relying on window energy ratings, it's important to be aware that you can drop your G value by as much as 3%, which in a window energy rating makes quite a significant difference. Equally, in a double glazed unit, you can drop your G value by as much as 6 or 7% just by putting it onto surface 2. So it actually offers a level of solar control. Now, it's important because if your window energy ratings are reliant on that G value, you're going to find that an A rating could quickly become a B rating or lower. Another topic which tends to get raised an awful lot is external condensation. The first thing that I want to point out about external condensation is it is in no way exclusive to triple glazing. In fact, external condensation is the result of all the years' development that we've done within glass, glass coatings, and getting the right cavities. External condensation is a physical sign that the glass is doing its intended performance. It is slowing down the rate by which the heat escapes through your window. In fact, external condensation is caused because the heat is being reflected back from the coating and it's not physically reaching that outer pane. That means that for certain times in the year, the glass itself is colder than the dew point in the air. When this occurs, condensation will settle on the outside, outer pane. This normally occurs for two short periods during the year, normally as winter turns to spring and then again as autumn turns to winter. Now, there are currently some before-market solutions for external condensation. At Guardian, we offer Climaguard Dry, and if anyone would like some more information on that, they can visit us in the expert arena, and we'll give you some um, literature on that. There's currently no aftermarket solutions, although I'm aware there might be somebody in the audience at the moment that's trying to develop one. Now, moving on to acoustics. Let's have another poll and see what people's thoughts are on this. So, how much better do people believe triple glazing is at reducing noise compared to double glazing? One, five percent or less. Two, ten percent or better. Three, twenty percent or better. If you could pick up your keypads now. Excellent. I've got quite an educated audience here today. In fact, triple glazing, if you use four leaves of four mil glass, is less than 5% more improvement in terms of acoustic sound reduction. However, there are ways that you can improve the noise reduction through a triple glazed unit. If you're using four leaves of four mil glass, then there is very little improvement. However, if you start looking at asymmetrical glass options or including laminates or acoustic, or acoustic laminates, then you can get a sound reduction improvement. For instance, if you change your outermost pane from four mil to six mil and keep two more, two, the other two leaves as four mil, you'll actually improve your, improve your DBAE rating by around 4%. So there is, an, there is actually an acoustic improvement, but it all comes down to the glass that you're using in that combination. 
Now, there are a lot of acoustic calculators available on the market. And if you are going to offer acoustics as a benefit in your triple glazing offering, then it's best to go through those and to see which ones are most viable for you. So just to summarise the presentation this morning, is there a thermal performance benefit to triple glazing? Yes. If it's correctly specified, you can get up to a 50% improvement in new value. Which glass surfaces should be coated? As a glass manufacturer, we would always recommend surfaces 3 and 5. Should the centre pane be toughened? Yes, because in the majority of cases you will not be able to track where exactly those units are going to end up. And finally, is there an acoustic benefit to triple glazing? There is, but only in the right configuration. Now, there's a lot of topics that I haven't been able to cover today. The issue of glass in triple glazing is actually vast. Now, within Guardian, we offer the Guardian Plus Technical Centre, and you can actually visit us at the Experts Arena, and if you leave us a card, we'll sign you up for that, and it will cover a lot of the things that I haven't had the opportunity to talk to you about today. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, it's my task to um, take some of the information that Steve's just presented to you and look at that from a more uh, Windows point of view. So I'm going to present the, um, uh, the challenges and the opportunities for triple glazing from a system supplier's point of view. Um, and just before I get started, uh, this presentation comes with a bit of a health warning. Um, you will see a lot of examples uh, in this presentation um, of uh, data performance, um, how a window might um, perform with certain glazed, glazed units in it. I just wanted everybody to realise that um, what you see on the screen here today is purely indicative. Um, we were very, very careful when we were asked to do this presentation that we didn't do this presentation using Vika products. So um, we've, we've created a very basic generic PVC window for this presentation. So it doesn't, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't lean towards uh, any one particular company's products within the audience. Something else that um, has just occurred to me while Steve's speaking, actually, um, and, and, and to point out to the audience, um, I'll mention U-values quite a lot during my presentation as well, but um, there's a subtle difference to the U-values that I'll be quoting, whereas Steve has been talking about um, centre pane U-values, anything that um, is within my presentation deals with whole window U-values. So that's the frame and the glass brought together, which is subtly different to what, um, what Steve has just presented. So, um, a couple of these early questions are actually very, very similar to what, um, to what Steve presented, but it's, they're purely there to just sort of build the, uh, build the presentation um, and build a story for later slides. So I'm going to have a go at the technology now and see if it works. Um, very similar to what um, uh, question that Steve's asked, but I, for my first question, um, I've just got a couple of options. Um, what would be the optimum thickness of a double glaze unit for thermal performance? So I've got two options on this first question, if you pick up your keypads. Option one would be 24 millimetres, or option two would be 28 millimetres. Okay, yes, um, certainly the audience um, uh, is uh, very well educated on, um, on, on these issues. I, I'm actually quite surprised by that result. Uh, I did expect to see that um, potentially the other way round. Um, because obviously, certainly uh, in the window side of the industry, 28mm units are probably more widely used than 24mm. So the answer um, and, and, and the reason that 24 millimetres tend to be um, the optimum thickness for a double glaze unit for thermal performance, it really surrounds the cavity fill. Um, now most of our um, 
high-rated products now. Um, we used to, particularly on A-rated products, we used to fill in our centre cavity uh, with a gas, uh, gas fill of some type. Now, um, in this case, um, argon performs best in a, in, in a cavity gap of somewhere around about 14 to 16 millimetres, 16 millimetres being its optimum. So a 16 millimetre cavity with my little green argon bubbles there floating around in the centre, two bits of 4 mil glass, obviously that adds up to 24 millimetres. Now whether it's by accident or by design, um, those 24 or 28 millimetre units sit quite nicely uh, in our 70 millimetre PVC profile systems which we predominantly sell in the marketplace at the moment. You can see in this particular example the 28 millimetre unit sits dead centre of the profile and what that gives us is balanced sight lines so no matter whether you're looking at your window from the inside or the outside the upstand on your profile and your glazing bead look very very similar so it's an aesthetically balanced product. So, just to move that uh, question, uh, or, or, or those, that, that on quite slightly, to talk, now talk about triple glaze units, I'd now like to just um, pose a second question to the audience of what would be the optimum thickness of a triple glaze unit for thermal performance. Got three options, um, first one is 24 millimetres, second one is 28 millimetres, or the third one is something else. Okay, please press your keypads. Okay, yeah, I think um, based on the uh, answers to the previous question, that, that's, that's pretty predictable. Um, and the answer really is based on our previous, uh, our previous question. Argon performs best in a 16mm gap. So now if we've got two cavities of 16mm um, and four pieces of, uh, four, uh, sorry, three, three pieces of 4mm glass, add that all together and that, uh, we, we come up with a 44mm uh, a thickness triple glaze unit for, for optimum, uh, optimum thickness. Now that is if you're using uh, argon for your, um, for your cavity fill. There are other gases available on the market uh, and I'm sure that there are um, companies in the expert arena if you want to talk about um, different alternatives to argon um, you can talk to those companies later on but for this presentation we're sticking with argon because that is the most widely available uh, and, and, and the, cost, the, the most cost effective on the market. So I'd just like to take that on one step further now and look what happens if we put our 44mm high performing um, triple glaze unit into our generic PVC window now. 44mm um, um, has pretty much destroyed our nice balanced sight lines and the aesthetic window um, or the aesthetic appeal of the window has now gone. Um, again, please, this is no, no indicator of what um, uh, anyone's particular product on the marketplace might look like. Some may be able to put a, uh, it fit a 44mm triple glaze unit into a system and not have a, an overhanging glazing bead. It's really there just to, um, to show you the problem that if you're using the most high performing triple glaze units, the issues that that might cause us within our standard 70mm profiles. Okay, so our next question. Based on those um, first few slides you've seen then, if you put, your, put, put yourselves in the, um, in the place of the consumer, would you accept those compromised aesthetics or wouldn't you? So if you would, press one for yes uh, and two for no. Okay, yeah, um, and, and I'm not surprised. Um, okay, so now you can start to see that um, although triple glazing might give us a, a, a much better performance uh, in our window, it will present issues um, if we want to use the very top end performing products with the current products that we are using in the marketplace. 
Now, we'll, we'll come back to um, thermal performance a little bit later, but there are other issues with triple glazing that I'd like you to be aware of with regards to uh, window design and manufacture. Um, let's just focus on hardware, and particularly uh, for a moment, our tried and trusted uh, UK casement window, which we all know and love. Um, if you were to take um, uh, a standard side hung, um, side hung casement sash, um, now, friction stays, standard friction stays that are available on the market, uh, for most sort of maximum size side hungs, you would use a 16 inch friction stay. Now, um, again, not, not pointing at any one, uh, any, any, any one company's product in particular, but you would tend to find that those, um, st those side hung friction stays will have a maximum weight carrying capacity of around about 24 or 25 kilos. So with our generic PVC window, two bits of 4mm glass, that would allow you to, uh, to make a maximum side hung sash size of around about 700mm wide by 1350mm high. But bring that extra weight of a third pane into the equation and all of a sudden our maximum sash size is reduced. We can now only make a sash that's around about 650mm wide by 1200mm high. <coughs> Excuse me, that's a, that's a reduction on your maximum sash size of around about 17.5%. And then if we look at top hungs, it's a similar story. Again, for uh, maximum size top hungs, most, most companies will be using a 24-inch friction stay. Uh, and again, standard products on the market will have a, a weight carrying capacity on those products that are around about 40 kilos. With two bits of 4mm glass, that would allow us to make a, a maximum sash size on our standard PVC window of around about 1250mm square. But introduce that third pane, that third piece of 4mm glass, and now our standard friction stay will only allow us to make a, a maximum sash size of around about 1200mm wide by a metre high. And that's a reduction of around about 23% in our maximum sash size. So, again, there may well be products um, available in the marketplace to get over these problems, but what I'm trying to highlight is if you change nothing to your window as it is currently, these are some of the issues that you may have to face with regards to your standard hardware on a, uh, on a casement window. There are also uh, that additional glass weight brings other issues. Um, deformation of our, um, of our bottom rail on our sashes could become a much larger issue with that additional weight. Now, that, that, that becomes a, the biggest problem um, when you tend to have sashes, um, products with sashes which are very large and square. So, for instance, top on casements, uh, top swings or fully reversibles, tilt and turns or pivots. All of a sudden, you know, the way in which you glaze that product now becomes much more critical. The positioning of the, uh, the glass packers on that bottom rail, uh, very, very close to uh, the corners to distribute that weight, becomes much more important. Correct towing and healing becomes much more important because there's a lot more weight in that sash. Um, also, as well as system suppliers, we may well have to look at um, those larger sash sizes and you may well have to start reinforcing sashes at smaller sizes. So these are the, uh, the problems that that additional weight or glass weight can bring to the current standard window, which we all know and love. So I want to focus a little bit more now on, um, on thermal performance. Now again, just a, a brief health warning, some of the, um, uh, the examples that you're about to see are based on uh, the standard BFRC um, window model for, uh, for calculating window energy ratings. So that will be a window 1230 wide by 1480 high. In this case, we've used a full steel reinforced PVC window. Uh, and also, um, to just give you an example for a comparison of performance, um, we've stuck, for this exercise, we've stuck with one type of seal unit design. Now, over the years at Vika, we've done hundreds of thousands of calculations with regards to window energy rating and whole window U-value performance. Uh, and there are thousands and thousands of different glass products that are out there on the marketplace right now. But for this example, what we've stuck with 
um, is um, one piece of low iron glass to the outside, um, two, two pieces of soft coat low E glass, and the type of uh, low E glass that we mean that you know, are generally available for three, from three or four glass manufacturers, the type of low, uh, soft coat glass that you would typically see in an A rated window, uh, a standard warm edge spacer bar, and argon fill. So let's start off with our, um, our standard A-rated PVC window with a 28mm double glaze unit. And I think uh, most of us in the industry now are comfortable with supplying those products, uh, many of them available, um, uh, you know, and, and, we're, and, and we're relatively comfortable with supplying products of those types. Now, you will find that most A-rated windows uh, that are out there in the industry will have a whole window U-value uh, of around about 1.4 and a window energy rating band of A, and normally most of those A-rated windows come in on an energy band of around about zero to plus five. And this really, this, this next example backs up what Steve was saying in his presentation. The same thing happens on the whole window um, as what, what, what happens with the centre pane U-value. If we were to just change our 28mm double glaze unit and put a 28mm triple glaze unit in there, um, you can see that um, the effects on performance are, are, are quite astounding. Okay, you might get a, 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 um, a slight boost on the, uh, the whole window U-value, that drops down to, uh, to 1.3, but with a 28mm triple glaze unit, our window energy rating band actually drops down to a B. So it's, um, it, it's, it's not good to assume that um, simply three panes are always better than two. Of course, um, using a 28mm triple glazed unit will allow you to use the same glazing bead that you might already use, but we have to be very, very careful in which we might sell that type of product to the consumer. And then to just cycle through to very, very briefly give you an idea, uh, if you started to increase the thickness of that unit, uh, the increase in whole window performance that you might get. So if you used a 32mm unit, uh, you can see that you get another slight increase in your whole window U-value performance down to 1.2. And with a 32mm, now our window energy rating band is about back up to where it was with our 28mm double glazed unit. With a 36mm, again, slight improvement in U-value performance down to 1.1. And significantly, once we get up to 36mm triple, you now move up a window energy rating band. Obviously, the, the BFRC launched a new A-plus band um, last year, which um, uh, is relevant to uh, any A-rated window with an energy index of 10 or above. So with a 36mm, we can now move up to an A-plus band. And then when we come to 40 and 44, of course, obviously, we're now starting to compromise on our aesthetics because our glazing bead um, is becoming very, very small or overhanging. But with a 44 millimetre unit, uh, sorry, with a 40 millimetre unit, you've now gone down to a uh, whole window U-value of 1.0. Uh, our window energy rating has increased again, and we're now up to a, an index of 16 and with 44 millimetres, our whole window U-value is starting to stagnate at around about 1.0, but our window energy rating band is still increasing. Now, we hear lots of things in the industry um, with regards to um, uh, 0.8 uh, whole window U-value performance. So, to, to, go, to go on further with a 44 mil triple unit, uh, to perhaps um, get towards a, a 0.8 um, whole window U-value performance. There are additional things that we can do to the frame to boost that, uh, that U-value even further. At Vika, we like to call these additions the eco-bling um, because there are things that we can bring into the frame to, to, to boost that U-value. Um, lots of companies now have got um, thermal inserts as an option that maybe be able to replace um, steel reinforcement in the cavities. Uh, these, are, the, the, these, the, these thermal inserts tend to be manufactured from reconstituted PVC. A couple of examples there. You can see one inside the reinforcement chamber. Uh, and We've also got an additional one on the, um, on the accessory legs. 
Also, you can fill certain cavities of the window with perhaps foam inserts. Again, at Vika, we can offer both. Um, uh, and we've got systems that have got both of these products. These foam inserts, to just give you an idea of the, the type of material that they're, they're made from, that material is quite similar to um, the type of foam that you might see your pipes lag with in your home. Very, very similar in, in, in touch and feel. Additionally, we can add things like centre seals. Um, now, these centre seals probably don't do a great deal with regards to um, increasing your weather performance, but they're literally uh, in, 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 in an open cavity between the outer frame and the sash, and it's literally there to divide that open cavity into, in, into smaller cavities to give us a better thermal performance. You can extend that, that, that technology as well. You will, probably, you, you will see some, uh, some of the higher end products will uh, have a, a glazing rebate gasket that goes around the glass uh, or something that they're now starting to do more widely on the continent is something called glass bonding. Um, and that's where they actually bond the glass to the sash itself. Now, um, that's, not, that's um, still a, uh, very, very uh, in its infancy in the UK. It is used on the continent relatively widely. It doesn't necessarily lend itself greatly to a lot of the window designs that we produce, but potentially it could be an option. Um, glass bonding um, actually gives us a double boost because not only does it give us a boof, boost in thermal performance, um, you use the strength of the glass to bond it to the, to, to the, uh, the sashes itself and that increases the strength of the product and it allows you to perhaps take some of the reinforcement out to the product in certain window designs. So let's just go back to our standard A-rated um, uh, wi generic window with a double glaze unit. So that's our, uh, our thermal performance right now. One point, uh, whole window U-value of 1.4 and a window energy rating of band A. Now, there are other things that we can still do um, to our, uh, our double glaze product to boost our performance yet further. Um, some of the eco bling that I mentioned, if you started to add some of that to your standard double glaze product, it is possible now, uh, and we've done it for some of our comp uh, clients using certain profiles with um, certain sight lines, it is possible to get into that A plus window energy rating band with a double glazed unit. Okay, you may have to uh, make some changes uh, and add some of the eco bling to the frame or use certain different profiles, but it is possible to do with a double glazed unit. So we can um, push the boundaries of performance uh, clever do of clever double glazing uh, still further yet. Also as well, you will find that some of the glass manufacturers are now starting to launch double coated products. Um, and they give you uh, a great boost in your whole window U-value performance. They don't necessarily um, uh, are not great for uh, window energy rating band performance. In our example, it moved our window energy rating down to a C, but it did mean that our whole window U-value could be moved up to a 1.2. So there is further yet that we can go with double glazing um, before we consider moving wholeheartedly to triple. So if you put that against um, uh, that, that improved double glazed performance uh, against a triple glazed equivalent, I hope everybody can pick that up. I know the, 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 the picture's quite small, but that improved clever double uh, performance is not dissimilar to what you would get with a 36 millimeter triple glazed unit if you used our example. With those, with those glass and spacer components. Okay, uh, you get a slightly better whole window U value of 1.1, um, but the window energy ratings are, are, are virtually identical. There's only a difference of, uh, uh, of, of one point in our, um, in our window energy rating. So really, um, you know, if we push the boundaries of double glazing that little bit further, it's not really until we get up to um, 40 and 44 mil triple glazing that you start to see big improvements over, uh, over double glazing. 
So maybe uh, you know we, we have to face uh, face facts that in the future, um, you know, if we want to um, if we want to keep the aesthetic appeal of our window, really, if we're going to uh, use um, ultra performing triple glaze units. Um, we might need to consider that 70 millimetre profiles are, might, are not necessarily the products that we might need to use with those um, 40 or 44, uh, 40 or 44 triple glaze units. Now, I don't want to speculate on what that dimension might be. Uh, that's for, the, for, uh, for, for each individual manufacturers to, um, to, uh, to decide for themselves. But, you know, that will bring its own problems. Um, again, just to give you an idea, um, if, if, if that's what the future may bring, uh, on the left-hand side here, we've got an example of our, uh, our, our standard generic PVC window again on the left. So what I did, um, just to give you an idea of what that might mean if we needed to uh, increase the thickness of our window profiles in the future, I used the same rationale um, as what we've just used for uh, the thickness of the um, of the. Um, uh, of the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the glass unit. So if we're at 28 millimetres now, and potentially we need to move, move, move to 44, that's an increase in glass thickness of 16 millimetres. So if we, just as a rough rule of thumb, if we did the same to our window profile, in pure material alone, that would be an additional 20% of PVC. So there's, you know, it needs to be considered what that's going to do to the price of the profile, the price of the frame, and the price of the overall window. So in conclusion, um, I think triple glazing can work, but we need to select the right products, and I think that probably backs up what Steve has already said. Please don't always assume that um, three panes has got a better performance than two. Uh, and I think based on, on some of the examples that we've given, uh, both on thermal performance and also with window hardware, you need to ensure that you select the right products for your triple glaze window. And of course, that is going to increase the, um, the overall cost of not only the components that you use, uh, but also uh, the, the cost of the whole window. Okay, so one final question, um, and really it's just to pull together all of, all of the information that you've seen over the last few slides. So based on what you've seen, um, hypothetically, if you had to switch all of your production tomorrow, um, what would you do based on the information that we've just presented? Would you, uh, there are three options here to, uh, to vote on. Would you only sell intelligent triple glazing at 36 millimeter units or above? Uh, would you be, pre be prepared to sell a compromise? Okay, so maybe somewhere between 28 and 36 millimetres um, and stick with your, uh, your, your, your 70 mil profiles and, um, and, and, and still maintain um, a decent um, uh, sight line balance with the product? Or would you say, no, I think actually there's still some way to go with double glazing yet? So, three choices. Intelligent triple, compromise triple, or clever double. Please vote now. Okay, um, interesting results. So um, maybe um, based on the first two presentations, there's still some way to go yet with double glazing before we, we, we head down the triple glazing track. Thanks very much, uh, everybody, for, uh, for your participation. Uh, and I'd just like to uh, hand over to uh, my colleague on the right, Grant Stratford. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everybody. So what are the implications for window hardware and the challenges that we face? We're obviously talking about the hinge side of any vent, be that a traditional casement open out, a fully reversible or even a tilt and turn system. We're not going to stand here today and promote specific solutions, but what we're going to do is raise a few issues that you need to consider. Are you working? 
Hexit Station. Material specifications. So, Grant just mentioned the sort of the various hardware types. Um, I think you have to think about it in terms of hardware and what your options are and what you can do. Most hardware companies within their range have different material selections. They have uh, mild steel products, they have stainless steel products, they have high grade stainless steel products. Sometimes those products have been introduced for other reasons like uh, corrosion benefits, but they also have a tensile uplift and that may be an assistance when you're talking about putting an awful lot more glass onto your window. Uh, a triple glaze solution obviously is going to be a 50% uplift at least and if we talk about acoustic solutions it could be even further. We also have to think about the changes to the profiles and the geometry. Mark alluded to it in some of his generic profiles there. You start putting a triple glaze unit into an existing profile, you start shifting that over, that starts to affect the centre of gravity on the actual hinge itself. So from a side hung point of view, if we talk about casements, which is the predominance in our market sector, you're putting more weight, more on the outside of the hinge, so you've taken it off the centre line of the hinge, which is putting more strain onto it. So not only are you pushing the parameters of the hinge, you're pushing it further out. And then when you go into top hung geometry, which is all designed to balance perfectly, you start pushing that glass outboard, you affect that geometry, and therefore you start to potentially lose your balance. So you do need to think about that and the considerations that come into that. Um, fixing specifications. As far as hardware is concerned, it is obviously screwed or riveted onto the profile, and that is a very important part of it too. Uh, I'm sure we've all had situations in the past where we've experienced um, using, let's say, a reinforcing screw, missing that reinforcing and just dropping into plastic, and we get away with it. It's not an issue, but you start pushing the parameters, you need to be very clear about what you're doing. You need to make sure you've got the right tensile strength in your screws, and it has to absolutely be the right fixing for the job. And then we look at, Mark alluded to earlier, the weight capacity versus the window size. It's a straightforward function at the end of the day. If you do nothing else with your existing hardware, um, you do limit what you can do. So it is a function of width and it is a function of height. So you will be reducing your height potentially with your uh, particular friction stay size. So you have to think about that and be clever about the design of your windows. Okay. Just running backwards and forwards, but that mic's not working. Um, Okay, some considerations. That's gone completely wrong. Some considerations. Um, as, as Richard alluded to, weight carrying capacity is the biggest issue here. Um, we know for side hung vents, they tend to start to lean out. Obviously, with an increase in weight, that is exacerbated. You need to consider with your hardware supplier that this, the product is supporting the vent correctly, that you've got adequate um, run up blocks and support for those vents. Operating forces increase, particularly on top hung. Again, the weight has an effect on both balance and the operating open and out force. You need to comply with various requirements with standards. Please make sure you consider those implications. Most top hung friction hinges for open out casements have a friction device, as is, as is given by the name. That is there to help the window balance. It's help, there to help the window stay in position. With the increase in weight, you need again to consider that that device provides adequate support so that the vent stays in position. Vent drop doesn't only happen on side hung. It happens with top hung projectile as well, but it's predominantly on the fixings. We all know the result of vent drop. You get cam clash on keeps. You have problems on closure. So again, please consider how you attach that product, to the vent to the frame. Window operation, it's the end user that's going to have to operate these windows, have the operating forces, so please consider them. If you think about egress hinges these days, most of them are supplied with an easy, easy clean facility. You have to slide the window across, you have to slide it back. The increase in weight will increase that operating force, so again, work with your hardware supplier to make sure that you have adequate um, consideration for the end user. I'm going to have to go backwards now, so bear with me. Standards. We all have to comply with various standards. I'm not going to run through them all, but a few that you need to consider. EN 13126 is a specific hardware standard. There are 19 parts to it. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through all of them, but part 6 is specific to variable geometry friction stays. That has a, a specific set of requirements, static load requirements. Make sure that your hardware supplier has tested to it. 
triple glazed units has an effect on it. 6375, obviously there are three parts to it. Again, the static load requirements and the restricted load testing has an influence or is affected by triple glazing. BS9991, which replaces the old 5588 for fire escape. Some people use top and vents for allowing egress from a building. Make sure that vent is staying in position if you're so going to do so. Not the best use of a top and vent, but if you're going to use it, then please make sure that you have considered that that vent will stay in place. We don't want any amputated limbs. And finally, the increase in weight probably doesn't have an effect on certain standards, but the changes in profile, the changes in hardware certainly will. So things like PASS 24, the security test, need to be considered. I think it's backwards. It is. So in summary. Okay. So covering what we talked about briefly, Is that one? Oh, well, we're back. We're back. We're back. Oh, bloody episode of the Chuckle Brothers. Um, talk to your hardware supplier. Uh, effectively, we're there to help. We're there to help try and give you the solutions you need. Check your maximum operating parameters. Don't push the boundaries. We've all done it in the past. We push the boundaries. That'll be okay. That won't cause us an issue. But we are now, if we're talking about triple glazing, Mark alluded to it as well, and he showed you his footprint. We're pu absolutely pushing to the limits of what the hardware, current hardware is capable of. And so therefore, stick to the guidelines, don't push, don't go beyond, make sure you select the right fixings, make sure your glass is packed well, as Mark says, all of those sorts of things. Make sure you're not using a 12-inch silent when it should be a 16, all of those things give due consideration to. Um, get testing done on your windows. Everything we do as a hardware manufacturer is generic. We do a wide range of testing, but all the parameters we specify are generic. So make sure anything you're doing or what you're looking at is on your window system. Um, work with known suppliers. You know, work with those suppliers that have got tested and audited products within their portfolio. You know that those are the guys that are going to give you the best solutions. And absolutely work to your system company's guidelines. You know, we all struggle at times with the parameters that we have to work with. In terms of cavities for hinges, don't stretch them too far, especially when you're overloading them on weight, because that will reduce the life expectancy quite considerably. But last and probably most importantly from our point of view is operating outside of normal characteristics. Generally, we have uh, a guideline for our products. Most all hardware companies will do. But what we will also be able to do is give you assistance. If you're now trying to push parameters heavier and further, there are things that we can do. We have a maximum opening number of cycles. We have a maximum opening angle. All of those things can be considered. We can reduce number of cycles and push weight further. We can reduce opening angles and push weight further. So if you have situations on triple glazing where you are being pushed on your weight and you're going outside of your system or your hardware company's recommendations, don't just do it and wing it and think it'll be okay. Talk to the hardware company because they'll give you best advice and guidance on the best way to ensure that what you're doing isn't going to give you some longevity issues. Just, just to pick up on what Richard says, a request, please use your hardware supplier as a consultant and a plea to the systems guys if you are redesigning your profiles to cater for triple glazing please think about the poor old hardware supplier he's got to fit into the cavity thank you